So hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Trauma Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're gonna be doing another compilation video. For some reason, there's high points where the tea and drama is really good and the conversation is really interesting. And then there's low points where nothing is really that newsworthy to me. But lately we've been having some great topics. So on the docket tonight is the City Girls potentially becoming a solo act as people speculate there's been a separation after JT releases her song, No Bars. Next, everyone's favorite destructive TV personality, Krishan Rock, possibly finally coming to her senses as she talks about removing all of her blue face tattoos and moving on. And lastly, Future shading his ex fiance Sierra and her husband, Russell Wilson, in one of his new songs. Future and R&B star Sierra were engaged at this point almost 10 years ago, and for some reason, Future always finds a way to say something disrespectful about her or her husband. So y'all know what to do. Be sure to number which story you're commenting on or leave a comment. I'll still read most of them and just get the conversation going. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So our first story is about Future being a bitter baby daddy. For someone who, again, has a Noah's Ark full of children, I don't understand why he chooses to focus a lot of his bitterness on Sierra and that situation. Sierra and Future met and began dating in 2012. They got engaged in October 2013. The pair's relationship turned sour three months after welcoming their son, Future Zaire, in May of 2014, when Future was accused of cheating on her. So these two were almost to the altar, and I remember when they were dating, this was probably when I was like in ninth or 10th grade. So me being young, I liked them together. I liked the whole rapper and singer, musician, entertainer relationship. Back then, I was so enamored by famous people and celebrities, though that's probably why I know so much about these topics sometimes. But I also love Sierra. Sierra's Goody's album was the first album I ever had. I still have the CD and my oldest brother bought it for me for my eighth birthday, which is crazy because why did I have that album at eight years old? But yeah, I really like Sierra and it actually was a shock that she got with Future. She is his fourth baby mother and I feel like even to be the third is kind of crazy. So to be anything past that is like, okay, well, yikes, but to each their own, I guess. I think a lot of women operate with a complex that they will be the one that makes a man commit and change his ways. But I feel like we have to learn how to view situations for what they are. Trust me, I've been there. Thinking a man will be different from his past ways because I think highly of myself, but he doesn't think highly of me because he is who he is. I do believe that men treat women differently based off of different reasons. So for Future to propose to Sierra and them to be engaged, it did give off that she was the one and that she and him would have made their situation work. However, that was not the case. He still cheated on her. He still continued to have his way. And Future is just so messy to me. It's weird how his dating life and him fathering children is always public and I hate how society especially grown men who are fans of these male rappers give excuses like he has the money and it's these girls that are groupies and all of his kids will be fine because he's up and it's like of course all of that is true but what about the well-being of the children the broken homes the conniving mothers and again the well-being of these children but I digress so I feel like Sierra was definitely the one who got away I mean I like how when his cheating came to light she left and never looked back especially being that this was revealed shortly after the birth of their son Future. And something tells me that Future probably wasn't regretful at first. I think he expected Sierra to stay. He expected to buy her back. He expected to see her just shut up and take it. He expected her to kind of act how most women in his life do, which is cater to his actions. There's a lot of women in the industry whose men cheat or maybe there's an agreement where they're allowed to do whatever and they sit idly by because they reap benefits of his celebrity. But the difference was Future got with somebody who had a lot of positive celebrities surrounding her. Sierra is very likable. She's never really been in any scandals. Her situation with Future is probably the only negative press that she's ever received. And she really turned it into positive press for herself and is pretty much adored by most. And I feel like Future should have considered that because she's not gonna be the type of girl who is gonna be stuck on a rapper, clung to a rapper, and having to put up with the rapper lifestyle. She is talented, she's renowned, she has her own, and she's a very respected figure in entertainment. So basically, Future effed around and found out. So Sierra moved on and got with NFL quarterback Russell Wilson, which I'm here for. I feel like that's a major upgrade. You got with someone who didn't have any kids prior to you. There was no messiness. Yes, he was married to a white woman, but he was single, single when they got together. It was no ghetto baggage. There was really nothing toxic about the situation from the public eye. And two more children have come out of the marriage that she has with Russell. To me, their blended family literally looks beautiful to the public eye. Of course, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors, but Sierra looks happier. She clearly loves Russell and she's kind of become this success story of leveling up. Literally, that's one of her slogans. 
And side note, this is why I encourage a lot of these rapper baby moms and girls who are just famous for dating famous men to just move on because you literally can always do better. Maybe you won't jump up in the way that Sierra did, but when it comes to peace of mind, morality, and getting what you really want, there is a man out there for you. You just have to stop being so blinded and jaded by the optics that come with this lifestyle. I literally don't see why some of these girls haven't moved on, but I digress again. So Future preview the song that he has coming out with Quavo, and here's what he had to say. So y'all, they flagged the video like as soon as I posted it. So let me just read y'all the lyrics. It says, big dog status, ball harbor. I bought Lennox Mall for my brothers. Go yard bag, tote the cutter. I got it out the field, F Russell. Go ask Lori about the protect. Then go ask Joy, ask Des. Philippe Water trying to drown a B. It's a habit tricking on a B. So long story short, this man is bitter. Literally, he lost his girl like over 10 years ago. How is it a decade later and you're still on this? Future knows he fumbled. You had literally one of the best, most respected, beautiful, and let's not forget positive reputation women in pretty much all of black entertainment. They seemed pretty equally yoked. They were a beautiful couple, but pride, ego, and audacity made you lose her. I'm telling y'all, audacity is like 99% off on sale these days, and these nakers are purchasing in bulk. He also mentioned Lori Harvey in the song. So Lori Harvey and him were dating a few years ago, and I don't know what it is with Future. It seems like the women who voluntarily leave him are the ones that he actually hates, like big hater and Energy, big bitter energy, but also big clout chaser energy. People act like large celebrities can't be clout chasers, but let's be real, everything they do is for clout, marketing, sales, attention, outrage, the whole nine yards. It's a marketing tactic. I studied marketing in college with a specific on digital marketing as well as social media marketing. And literally we talked about how outrage can push a product to consumers faster than traditional means of marketing. So all of these people know what they're doing. They are signed to labels that probably have a marketing department with college graduates just like myself who will tell them how to navigate their promotions. This was all to get people up in arms and riled up so that we can go listen to this song when it comes out. Same thing he did last time. Future and his disrespectful ways will be brushed under a rug because people are not going to hold him accountable. They're just going to call him what he is, which is bitter and bothered and messy, you name it. And then he'll do it again because there's really no consequence. Now, is it that deep from the sake of a fan's point of view? No, but from Russell Wilson's perspective, kudos to him for remaining very solid, never wavering out of ignoring him, and also stepping up and being a father figure for Future's son. Future has a playground full of children, and Russell has taken on a father figure role out of the love and respect for Future's child's mother, which is Sierra, but he still has the nerve to say F him. Like if that doesn't scream bitter baby daddy, then I don't know what else does. He needs to grow up and heal. She is not coming back, Brody. Our next story is about Krishan Rock moving on from Blueface. So she says, her relationship with Blueface is holding her back and I don't think she truly cares. And I think we'd be naive to think that now that Blueface has kind of substituted her for his other baby mom, Jaden, that the situation is now ending. No, if you ask me, it's just now starting. The child that they share together will be the true testament of whether or not this relationship will truly end. I'm not a mom, but I work with a lot of young women through my modeling agency, and I've had to counsel girls over the years as it relates to their baby daddies. Too many young women are having babies to keep a man, and even if they got pregnant and are going through the pregnancy because it's what they want, many of them are very attached to the baby dad, even though the relationship is not healthy. And it's so sad to see. Like working with some of the young women within my agency, now that I think about it, none of them have ever said anything positive about their child's father. But you'd be surprised how many of them are still dealing with them past just co-parenting. So Krishan tweeted out the other day saying, I'm trying to convince myself to go through the laser removal. I made the appointment. I'm just so attached to it. It's crazy. Now Krishan Rock has so many blue face tattoos. Like I said before, she literally looks like a middle school yearbook at the end of the school year. It's actually pretty alarming. And I'm not even sure what to make of this. Obviously when it comes to Krishan and blue face, I can't really predict or take anything face value because I feel like most of what they do is for clout. I think that the internet has given Krishan so much sympathy and empathy for everything when I feel like she plays a role in her own demise. And I don't know, I just see it in a way where both parties are both victims of their upbringing and surroundings, but also perpetrators of their current reality in each other's life. This relationship was doomed from the start. Also, I find it odd how Krishan was the other woman to Blueface 
Blueface. And because she became the main so that Blueface can profit off of her, people disregard the fact that she doesn't really deserve that much sympathy. Everyone is always so quick to call out the side chick or the girl who infiltrated a relationship. But in this case, it's like people are Ray Charles to the reality of this. Again, unpopular opinion. I don't understand why people don't like Blueface's first baby mother, Jaden Alexis. Like prior to her having much more attention than she does now, which has only happened over like the past few months. What exactly did people dislike about Jaden? If anything, her whole entire reality was shifted when Krishan decided to get with Blueface and become this infamous public figure knowing that he had a girlfriend. And Blueface knew that too. Nonetheless, Krishan then tweets and says, the next naker I show y'all finna be the naker I marry. I love my space. I love my peace. I love me. I'm not pressed to show if I moved on. I'm excited to show my growth and new blessings. So the question now is, has Krishan turned over a new leaf? I really feel like the only thing we can say is, I'll believe it when I see it. Because every single time she puts out tweets that shows that she's ready to take accountability, she's ready to grow, she's ready to finally isolate herself from the man who really is bringing her down, it's usually all for it to be some type of publicity stunt or a way for her to be back in good graces with Blueface days later. Like, I'm sorry, but it's giving clout chase. Honestly, I feel like she said all of that just to promote their show coming back out on Zeus. I believe they are now in season two. I didn't watch season one. I won't watch season two. I did watch the trailer for season two, but I don't plan on watching this season because I just can't support what this relationship stands for. I'm all for Ratchet TV, but this one is just too far for me. I feel like I would get triggered and PTSD just by watching it. I hate that because Krishan has this repeated behavior of saying stuff like this, but also staying with Blueface. I just literally just have to say, I'll believe it when I see it. Regardless of what she has said and done, I still wish for her to leave this situation because it's not only annoying, but toxic, especially for a soon to be mother. But it's like Krishan doesn't prioritize herself and her health. I don't know why she feels so attached to Blueface. I mean, I do understand that, but I don't understand with all of the riches that she now has obtained, the clout and the fame, having a fan base that literally is on her side so much that they'll make excuses for her. And just being that scorned woman, which most people do champion behind and want a woman to leave a man and do better. Like she has that backing, yet it's still not enough for her. That's why I say mental health and relationships can fluctuate because a relationship can really ruin your peace. People don't consider the amount of chemicals the body and brain releases when you're dealing with somebody romantic romantically and how much it can jade your judgment. So I'll leave the question to y'all. Do you think Krishan is serious this time and moving on or do you think this was publicity or do you think only time will tell? Let me know. Our last story is about the city girls potentially going solo. Now, I've been hearing this rumor slash narrative on social media and even on YouTube, and I really thought people were just insinuating, hence why I never really talked about it because there's never been any real proof of this. But I think that there are fandoms and people who are just invested into pop culture who kind of see the dynamic of certain people in entertainment, which brings them to these theories. So JT just dropped a solo song called No Bars. This is a single put out by her only, and this was another reason that many music fans assume that the city girls are going solo. And I've been seeing a lot of people pushing for them to go solo for many reasons. People think that JT is the real rap artist of the group. She's the one who really wanted to rap in the first place and that she is in it because she likes music and she likes to write. And then on the other hand, people think that Young Miami really isn't invested into being a rapper. She likes the money that comes with it, the attention, the fame, and she'd rather be arm candy to Diddy and live a life where she's just making money and doing her. Now, I think that these theories are actually fair because what is being reflected to the public kind of does support this. Anyway, so I had a chance to listen to the song No Bars and personally, I feel like in all honesty, if that's what she's gonna go solo with, she should just stay in the group. And I'm saying this from a point of not being biased, not being a hater, just genuinely my thoughts. I don't think the song was that good. I feel like it's a song that if you're a fan of her, you're gonna bump it, but I don't see it being a staple debut single as a solo artist. Like I feel like she already put out a song like this before. It sounds like her first day out song that she released when she first came out of jail years ago it sounds the same to me. Like the same Detroit style beat, and I was really expecting more. But at the same time, society has really gassed up a lot of women in music to believe that they are talented rappers when maybe they're just okay. Like I'm really not trying to sound like a hater, I promise. I'm just saying there was really no bars in the song. I watched the video, I pulled up the lyrics, it was the same stuff that she says in every single song. I don't understand how these girls are signed to major labels and for some reason they still struggle to put out music that is elevating their talents. And what I mean by that is, if you have all of the resources 
resources to write a song that could potentially be your breakout solo song, why not come with something that really sets you apart from what you do within your group, as well as what is done amongst female rappers? And I do believe that JT can be a solo artist because that song did go top 10 without that much promo, without this big rollout, so she does have the potential. Clearly, her fan base really supports her and will stream her music too. I think she definitely can do it, but I want to see JT put out something that is just a little different. And I don't even mean different in sound or subject matter because we know what type of artist she is, but I mean different in terms of what she actually says. We already know that Biddy's is haters. We already know that she's a real B. We already know that Biddy's be in her business. We know. So you can keep the same subject matter, but I feel like it's the way how it's being said. It doesn't sound like anything she wouldn't do within her group. So as a solo artist, I feel like when you don't have to worry about another individual, this is your time to really show us your talent. I feel like a lot of the discourse on Twitter was saying that she killed it. She ate, she went hard, but I thought the song was literally just okay. I actually liked the video more than I liked the song itself because the video to me was creative. I liked her look with the blue hair and the eyes. I liked that it was more of a vlog style. So I do think she has the potential to be solo, but at this point with female rap, it doesn't even matter what I think. If you have a large enough fan base, you're gonna remain popular, even if I personally think she can do better than what she just put out. But it is one of her first solo songs, so I'm here for the growth. I wanna see her elevate and I wanna see her use her resources that she has. I mean, she seems to be very cool with Nicki Minaj. I feel like that's a great mentor for penmanship and creativity when it comes to writing. So with JT's look and fan base, if she can increase the quality of her lyrics, I think she does have what it takes to be solo. Young Miami doesn't seem to care as much as her about music, so we just have to see what's gonna end up happening with the City Girls. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. What do you think? What do you know? Let me know. If you haven't already, go stream my song Ceremony. It is out on all platforms. The link is down below. And lastly, don't forget to follow me on all of my social media networks, and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye, y'all. And give testimony. So we drink to my success. Now every day is a ceremony. Yeah.